Hello and welcome to Shakespeare. We get to hear the last of Cardinal Wolsey in Act 3, Scene 2 of Henry VIII today. It's been, it's been a long one and we've heard a lot from him, but he's not going to go out without kvetching about it just a little bit more. Um, so yeah, Cardinal Wolsey was undone because it was discovered that he was hoarding money in order to buy himself a popedom and because he wrote a letter to the existing pope to say that Henry should not be allowed to get divorced and remarried, plus a few other little things, blah, blah, blah. So he's been, he's been undone and um, put under house arrest and he's been told to give his medallion back, which he didn't do. But anyway, yesterday and today he's chatting with Cromwell, who's sort of his protege, and Cromwell told him that um, Sir Moore is now the Lord Chancellor and Cranmer is now the Archbishop of Canterbury, I believe, and Anne Boleyn is about to become queen. And yesterday, Cardinal Wolsey was like, she was my undoing. And at the end of that, Cromwell makes sort of a sort of a plea because he really looked up to Cardinal, the Cardinal Wolsey, and he's like, really, do you have to go? Like, this is really, really sad. And Cardinal Wolsey replies, Cromwell, I did not think to shed a tear in all my miseries, but thou hast forced me out of that honest truth to play the woman. Let's dry our eyes, and thus far hear me, Cromwell, and when I am forgotten, as I shall be, and sleep in dull, cold marble, where no mention of me must more be heard of, say I taught thee, say Wolsey, that once trod the ways of glory, and sounded all the depths and shoals of honor, found thee a way out of his rack to rise in, a sure and safe one, though thy master missed it. Mark but my fall, and that that ruined me. Cromwell, I charge thee, fling away ambition. By that sin fell the angels. How can man then, the image of his maker, hope to win by it? Love thyself last. Cherish those hearts that hate thee. Corruption wins not more than honesty. Still in thy right hand carry gentle peace to silence envious tongues. Be just and fear not. Let all the ends thou aimst at be thy countries, thy gods and truths. Then if thou fallst, O Cromwell, thou fallst a blessed martyr. Serve the king and prithee lead me in. There take an inventory of all I have to the last penny is the king's. My robe and my integrity to heaven is all I dare now call mine own. Oh, Cromwell. Cromwell, had I but served my God with half the zeal I served my king, he would not in mine age have left me naked to mine enemies. So it's a farewell, and Cromwell says farewell at the end, and they they exit the scene, and it's yes, Cromwell is or not Cromwell, yes, Wolsey is set up to be the bad guy, sort of in this play, because um, he's kind of underhanded in the whole tax thing, and the whole getting Buckingham killed thing, and the whole being against the king thing, and the whole like two faced thing. But it's it is a little bit of a sad monologue because he realizes that he let his ambitions grow too big or get too far out of hand or something like that and and he likens himself again to Lucifer falling from heaven after after upsetting God um, and that's that's kind of a sad thing to feel so yeah it's it's kind of a lovely piece just because it's it's Shakespeare showing us once more that even villains have feelings and yeah, and that sort of thing. So anyway, thus ends act three, scene two, and tomorrow we get into act four. Finally, 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 we are out of act three, scene two. I will see you tomorrow for act four. Mwah.